Hey, good morning. How are you doing today? Well, well, well. Look who's online with us today. It's Mr. Bob Eubanks. How you doing, Bob? Hope you're doing well. Great to see you here. You here to work out with us today? You know, just uh, running a little bit late in here. It's nine o'clock and I know there's people going to be coming in, but uh, this is kind of the start of the day. I got a great workout for you today. I'm excited. And for those of you that can't join us live, I know you'll be watching this now and this is uh, going to be on YouTube for you later on as well. Good morning, Bob. Great to see you. Do you have your 60 up balance board there ready to go? I hope uh, you're joining us for the workout today. It's going to be a good one. Thursdays are normally a little bit more intense. Uh, hey, Deborah. Great to see you here. Thanks for showing up and being there. Uh, Pat, great to see you here as well, Pat, today. Um, I got some, I got a little workout for you, Pat, that I did last night. You may have seen the video last night uh, that I went on live just to say that I've got some uh, stuff, you know, going on. I planned, it. obviously I always plan a session the night before, but there's something for you. Hey, Bob. So uh, if you notice, Bob Eubanks is with us today. It's the first time Bob's joined us on class from his home. And uh, Bob's got his 60 up balance board and going to be training along with the class today. So great to have you here, Bob. Um, and it's great to have everybody here. I, I really, uh, every single one of you is invaluable, so important. And my message is going to be about that today as well. Let me just turn this music down just a little bit. So again, make sure that you have your <laughs> Bob. Whee! I know when I used to train you, you always have those moments. It, uh, there's two moments of we. Either we, I'm on the board and it's going great, or I need to go to the bathroom. But anyway, that's a whole other story. Hey, Bob, good to see you. Are you uh, on your own computer today? Are you still there with Ben? That's the uh, thing going back through the messages the other day. It's uh, great to see you and your son uh, working together for your health. Uh, Ken, great to see you here, Ken. Um, again, always great to have everybody here. I've got a, a three-part workout, as you know, on Thursdays. And Thursdays are pretty uh, intense. They grow in intensity with the first 10 minutes, then a little bit of a break, then the second 10 minutes, a little bit of a break, and then the last 10 minutes. Now, remember, have your water with you. Uh, make sure you have a chair available. If you need to go get a chair, get a chair now we're going to be doing some exercises from mobility as well, from chair to standing to moving. Um, and then uh, like water, uh, make sure you have a chair, have your short bands. If you're not going to use the short bands, you know you can just do the exercises with just your arms, which will be, uh, you know, again, getting the idea of moving the body while being balanced for everyday life. <laughs> Bob, you have to go to the bathroom. Uh, for those of you that just joined us, Bob Eubanks is with us today. So if you've got any questions before we start, if you've got a question for Bob or a comment for Bob, um, uh, Bob, you're, this is Bob Schrader. Uh, Bob, that was quick. Uh, Bob Eubanks. I've got to keep saying all these Bobs now. I feel like I'm bobbing everywhere. Um, you're still on his computer, but on your account. That's great, Bob. Really appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I keep seeing on my screen, I have to go to the bathroom. Um, <laughs> so if you have any questions over the next two or three minutes before we get started that you want to ask Bob, because it's great to have Bob here, um, or any comments to give to him as well, feel free to post them here. And I know Bob can respond to those uh, before we get started. Now, I know on Tuesday we had some connection issues. We had some um, being able to type question in issues that I couldn't see. We're hoping that that's a little bit resolved today, but we're only going to find out by getting back on and actually doing these classes. So I'm hoping that we can uh, you know, have a better performance than we did. Good morning, Craig. Gate, great to see you. Not gate. It's great to see you here. We're going to be working on your gate. Um, Bob Eubanks, don't spell Bob backwards. Uh, yeah, or double spell the O. That's the one thing that uh, you want to be careful of as well in there. What happens if you spell Bob? Can you write Bob backwards so I can understand what you're trying to say? Um, so the workout today... We're going to start a little bit different. I hope Jen shows up uh, pretty soon because um, the first exercise, Jen had asked a question on Tuesday about spasticity. And um, I went and researched it a little bit and want to, again, address that so at least we understand a little bit more so you can create your own workouts if you feel that tightening of the muscle. Um, and so, again, I'm hoping Jen will show up today. If not, Jen, I hope you get this on YouTube later. Um, 
Oh, I get it, Bob. Bob backwards is... It's that look that you always give, Bob. Anyway, it's great to have everybody here. I know that we got uh, a couple, a little bit longer on here because I got on about three minutes late in here today. Great to see you, Craig. Um, and I've got a little exercise for you as well, Craig, in here today um, relative to the drop foot that we talked about on Tuesday. Um, I know you enjoyed those exercises. I have another one. Bob, I got a specific exercise for you as well. So the first five exercises we have is going to be specific for people that bought questions on Tuesday and incorporating them into a workout. Herbert, great to see you here. Thanks so much for showing up, uh, being part of the group. We're so excited. We've now got over a thousand members in this very unique, special, private group. And that's uh, something that we didn't know how it's going. When we launched you know, 60 Up and it started, Bob and I, Bob had an issue. I was able to come up with a solution. It's been incredible. And now to see it grow so much onto where we are now is absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. Scott Austin. Scott is a dear friend of mine. He just uh, got on to watch, I'm sure, just for a few seconds. He's from New York. And we did uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber shows together. So Scott, great. He was a fantastic dancer and uh, performer. Crazy guy. We had so much fun together. Um, touring Japan when we were doing the show over there. And then I know Scott, like I said, was uh, on Broadway shows. And he was also in a Michael Jackson video as well. He's bad. So uh, it's great to see you here, Scott, just to say hi. I know you don't have a 60 up board, but uh, thanks for stopping by. Jan, Jan, great to see you. I love the last, this, the middle name, Lancaster. Great to see you. Um, I always think of Bert Lancaster, who was growing up in England as a kid, was one of my dad's heroes in the movies. So just seeing that took me back a little bit to my youth. <laughs> Scott, you are so funny. Thanks so much. So with that being said, I want to talk a little bit before we get started. Good morning, Kirk. And I love the fact Kirk says good morning to everybody. I'm going to turn this music down again just a little bit. I think sometimes when the music's loud for me, all you guys hear is the... Uh, I, I, all you hear is that boom, boom, boom in the background. You don't really hear that. So I try not to put it too high, but it does bring a little energy in the background. Thanks so much, Scott. Proud of you too, mate. It's, uh, certainly, Scott's very, very smart and you know, does a ton of investigation into life. So it's a pleasure to have you here. So this is my thought today. There's two things that are going on right now. One, just because you have the 60 up balance board means nothing. Having something means nothing. You can have a great... Um, <laughs> You could have all the money in the world sitting in the bank. If you don't use it, it's just money, right? If you don't have any money sitting in the bank, it's okay because you've got more internal power. And that's what I want to tap into today. The ability to use what you've got. You've got a 60 up balance board. If you don't get on the board, it means nothing. It's just a, a, something sitting in your home. And the difference between people in this world is who gets up and actually does something with what they've got and makes what they've got the highest level of excellence or they sit there looking at what they don't have because things you can get easy, right? You, you find a way to get things, but the things that you have internally, your character, your heart, your desire, your goals, those type of things are unique to you and you can't buy those. You can't have, nobody else can do the work for you. And that's the bottom line. Nobody can do the work for you. You have to get up. And that's why I love this group so much. And all of you that come here and, and work out every day, you're taking action and control of your life. Now, when we talk about life, we know we're going through a typical 2020, um, 2020 election that kind of fits 2020 because everything here has been a model. But I'm talking to my friends or I'm seeing posts of people that are stressed out, they're worried, they're you know nervous of the future. And my message to you there is it's okay. Everything will be okay. See, we've gone through worse things and looking at the senior generation, you've gone through so much and you survived. And if we've had presidents in the past that you haven't liked, we still survived. If you didn't like the last four years, you're still here. If you love the, the, the last four years as far as the leadership, and again, there's no opinions going on here, we survived. And the next four years, we're going to survive. So let go of the stress, let go of the fear, let go of the worry. Make every day special because all of you are special. And what you do with that day is really what comes from inside you. So try and let go of the stress and know you're going to survive. Um, Bob, you once heard, I mean, Scott, 
I once heard you have to decide to change, decide to decide to change. You have to decide to decide. It's true. It's got to be something that you want. But again, I put down the goal has to be greater than the effort it takes to achieve it because the goal will keep you on the road. Just because you decide to change or you decide to decide to change in there doesn't mean to say you're going to, right? It could turn around. You can give up in a day. That's why I say set your goals. My goal is happiness. That's what I want at the end of, the, of, of this time. I want to look back on my life and say, how happy was I? How much did I enjoy the life I was gifted to have? And that's my goal. Everything else is secondary. So it's up to me to find the happiness. Uh, Bob, hey, for everybody that's in here, Betsy, um, Betsy, uh, you'll notice here, Bob Eubanks is here. Uh, Bob, Betsy is the professor. Um, Bob, hey, everybody, do you know Dan has 36 professional players? Yeah, I've got a lot of professional athletes and players. Thanks, Bob, for letting everyone know. I'm really proud of the players, not because of um, what they're doing, but the journey they took to get there. Nothing is easy. And training people that commit and dig in and go through the tough times and find a way to achieve their goals and dreams. As I said before, a lot of the time, there's so many... Um, the journey is better than the destination, but we're so busy rushing, rushing to the destination, we forget the journey. And so take the time, enjoy these next four years, this next month, the end of 2020. Enjoy it because every day is so important. If you don't think so, miss a day and find out what happens. Um, hey, Betsy, absolutely, Scott, exercise the cure for success. Um, and uh, Vicky, you're applying to Bob Eubank. So I'm going to start the workout in about 30 seconds. Uh, most people don't know that Dan has a wooden leg. <laughs> Scott, I told you, once Scott gets in here, we're all in trouble. He's a crazy guy. But uh, I can tell you, both my legs work pretty well. Um, <laughs> but if I had wooden legs, Scott, that would explain why I was always skating in circles. Um, what you may not know, and I'm going to give you this information before we start, Bob Eubanks was a professional skater, a quad skater, and actually was competing to, I uh, was preparing and to uh, compete in the Olympics as a roller skater. Um, and so that's maybe a little bit of things that you didn't know about your, uh, Bob Eubanks. I just called you Yob, Bob. Bob, are you a Yob? Uh, so Bob Eubanks was a professional roller skater. He used to do double axles and all these different turns on skates. And we always talked about maybe Bob and I getting back on our own skates one day just for fun. So with that being said, we got such a specific workout today. Thanks for being here. I know some people would be jumping in, but let's get this going. All right, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to put my gloves on. If you have a problem hearing me, let me know what was in there. Um, <laughs> Scott, there you go, Bob. I like that. Okay. So we, the other day we had um, Jen that talked about spasticity. I want you to know, and I'm going to just come a little bit closer for this. And if my mum was listening, she'd know my uncle Joel, who I've spoken about before, uh, was born with cerebral palsy. And the, the term in those days was spastic. So I grew up in my home with someone that was deemed spastic, which always had a negative connotation because people would limit him. Uncle Joel was a super intelligent, incredible man, had the greatest laugh I've ever heard. Um, and when you looked into his eyes, he was alive. He loved football, soccer for a while until the hooligans came in. Then he became a rugger fan or rugby fan. He always called it rugger. He loved cricket, but he had limitations with his body due to being, uh, you know, having cerebral palsy, which was a form of create spasticity. So spasticity um, is really where the brain or spinal cord has a disconnect to the muscles, both for stretching and for flexing. So what we're gonna to do today is we're just gonna have one quick exercise as a warm up that is for Jen who says that she has spasticity in her wrists. That means a lot of times hands turn in because the muscles are contracted and unable to release out um, because of, again, the disconnect either from the brain or the spinal cord. So our first warm up today is very simple. I'm going to put your hands on top of the poles in here. And what I want you to do is just push your wrist down. If you notice, I'm in this position. So push those wrists down and just hold it for a second. Most, because of the contraction in the wrist is inside, most hands will turn in. So the way to work it is to push down and hold it for a second 
so that you can help begin to stretch out the muscles and because you're stretching them, the connection begins to build back to the brain again. So we're in here. So now let it come up and just push it back down. Now this is a great exercise for anybody. It's not just if you have spasticity in the wrists, let it come back up again. What we're doing is we're stretching out, we're elongating the muscles that control the wrist. One more time, come into here and move it down. Now what I want you to do is now bring your hands up, put one hand out, and what I want you to try and do is try and pull the hand up. If I go from the side, you'll notice I'm in the motion of accelerating on a motorbike. Just hold it just with one hand, pulling it back. Now, change hands and just see if you can pull it back and just hold for a second. Rev that engine and relax. Rev the engine and relax. And I hope you're all doing this with me because this will help again in increase, let's change hands, this will help increase your strength in your arms because strength comes from flexibility and Scott knows about that. Having been a ballet dancer, having been a professional dancer, Scott, he'll know that the strength that we gained as dancers came from the ability to be flexible and control the muscles in multiple different um, angles that we needed to be able to do to move and, and keep in time with the music. Good, now what I want you to do is take the hand, if you find it's dropped a little bit, I'm going to start rolling it around. Just roll that wrist around. It's very simple. Just in here. There you go. And make sure when you go over the top, you're in that motorbike angle. So I come to here and I'm rolling it around. And we go to the other side. Roll it around. You're rolling it from the inside to the outside. When you get to the top, it's that motorbike angle. Just hold it for a second. Now, we're not gonna make a huge improvement doing this today. Good, put your hands back on. All I want you to do now is just push down and up. My hands are actually rolling over the top, but as my fingers touch, I push my wrist down. This, this is something that, again, if anybody has this issue with their wrists, try and do this every day to a point where you feel comfortable, but not where you feel pain. And maybe you can't push down all the way to begin with, but certainly it's great. Now, the last thing we're gonna do, because often when your wrists go in, your fingers come in, I want you to link your fingers together. Just do this for me, it's part of the warm up. Link your fingers, turn your hands and see if you can push out. Great exercise for strengthening, um, or I should say, um, reversing the action of hands twisting in. Just here, link them in. Even if you find you're linked here, see if you can just twist those hands to the ground instead of all the way in front of you just to release that up. There you go. Last couple. And there you go. Okay, let's get on with the next part of the workout. Hey, Pat, good to see you here. Okay, next thing I want you to do. This one in here is for Bob. So this is specifically for you, Bob. This is uh, Bob Schrader, not Bob Eubanks. But everyone, Bob Eubanks is in the house working out with us. If you scroll down and want to say hi to Bob, feel free. Lift one leg up and hold. Put it down. Lift one leg up and hold. And again, the leg that stays on the ground is the one that is working. The leg that's lifting is not the balance. It's the one that's on the ground. So we're in here. Lift and down. Lift and down. Lift. And I know, Bob, you had said you had, it's really frustrating for you because you want to be able to keep up with the, the, uh, um, the class, the speed we're going, and because of your fighting Parkinson's and you're a warrior, as in W-A-R-R, -R, um, warrior, it gets frustrating for you. So what we're gonna do here is now stand both feet on the ground. Now I want you to imagine your feet moving fast. Just imagine, get that brain connection to your feet. Just see yourself, feel yourself. Even if your feet on the ground, everybody, imagine you're moving really fast. Feel yourself running through the streets. Good, now as you do that, Bring up your heel. Bring up your heel. So my toes staying on the ground, I'm just bringing up that heel nice and, nice and quick. Now, it's not about how fast you go. When I say go, I want you to lift your heel up. Are you ready? As quick as you can, keep your toe on the ground. Right foot, go, up and down. Left foot, go, up and down. Right foot, go, up and down. Left foot, up and right foot up. So what we're doing is we're increasing or connecting the speed of the brain movement to the foot. Now do it in your own time. 
Hold it still and go in your own time. You're just going to decide when you're going to bring up. What we're doing is we're increasing the speed of the messaging from the brain to the foot. How quick can I react? Last one. Good. Now, just rock on each foot. I remember Bob Eubanks, when we used to do this together, just as a warm up and just doing these exercises, how quickly you were able to be able to go from not doing them or feeling uncomfortable or unconfident to how quickly it became part of a daily routine that felt so comfortable. It was amazing to see your progression. Good. Can we now pick up the speed? So those heels are beginning to move. Now, if, you're, if your heels aren't moving fast, Bob Schrader, just again, imagine, think they're moving faster than they are. Have that brain lead the body movement because your brain will always govern your body. Good. And bring it back down. Now, what we're going to do here, lift your foot and lift your foot. Now, what I want you to do is try and take that same movement of pushing off the toe, but instead of doing your heels, which we were just doing, now as you push, lift the foot, lift the foot, lift the foot. So instead of keeping your toes on the ground, you're now working through that mobility of the feet. I push off the toe, I push off the toe, I push off the toe. So we go into here. Great stuff. Last couple. Now, can you march it a little bit faster? Lifting those feet. And bring it to the ground. Okay, next exercise we're going on to. This one is for you, Craig. What I want you to do is lift your leg up, put the toe on the edge of the board and let the heel touch the ground. So again, my heel is on the ground. If I turn to the side, I'm in this position. Now what I want you to do is lift your knee up and bring it back down. So each time your foot, the ball of your foot touches the edge of the board and the heel touches the ground. Now, when you are suffering from drop foot, um, or a weakness in the front of the shin to control the foot, what will happen is when you lift, the foot's going to drop. So what I want you to do is only lift as high as you can. And let's change legs because I can feel my left, my right, left leg's getting tired, stay on the ground. Put the heel, I mean, sorry, the ball of the foot on the edge of the board and just lift and try and keep that toe up. Keep that toe up nice and high and try not to let it, as it begins to drop, push it back down again. Push it back down. If the foot's dropping, put it on the edge of the board and let it feel. As it's dropping, push that heel down and try and pull that foot up. Let's change feet. Ball of the foot on the edge of the board. Lift. If the foot drops, put it back down. If you can hold it up, keep that toe pulled up. This is an exercise that would be great for you to do, Craig. And anybody else. As much as I, I'm helping Craig in here, just a little exercise to help and this is for anybody that has uh, problems with their ankles change feet with control of the foot in here henry i don't think you're on today henry but again same action with the issue you have of your foot turning out bring the knee in and do this exercise okay good now what i want you to do is come in put your toe on the board so again you'll notice the board isn't wobbling it's held in the middle now my heel is up my toe is down all we do is don't lift your knee, lift your toe and touch the board. If I do it from the side, you're here and down, here and down, here and down. Now what we're strengthening here, hip flexor is, and core is holding your leg. Your muscle is working in the quad because it's holding the foot at the right angle. And then your ankle and the front of the shin, the muscles at the top of the foot, the tendons are working. Good, let's change feet. Lift your foot up. Tap the toe on the board. You'll notice my heel's up. Now, here we go. Lift and down. Lift. Now, if you're struggling with this because, again, the muscles are weak, don't worry. Even if you just pull the toes inside the shoe and the foot doesn't work, we're building back to strength again. So, again, keep it strong. Keep it safe. Keep it working. And for those of you that don't know that have just joined us, Bob Eubanks is with us today. So, Bob, it's great to have you here. I know you're at home doing these exercises. Excellent. In there and bring it back down. Now we're going to put the whole thing together. Bring your right foot, tap, lift the foot, tap, bring it down. Are you ready? Let's go on the right foot again, then we'll go to the left. We alternate. Are you ready? 
So lift the foot, tap, lift the toe off, tap, bring it down. Left foot, tap the toe, lift the toe, tap the toe, bring it down. And again, now you'll notice that I'm wearing two different color shoes. For those of you, I know Bob Eubanks doesn't know why I'm doing that. It's because the red is the right foot and the blue is the left foot so that you could see which foot I'm using if you get a little bit lost. So left foot, and again, we're mirror image so that again, we can copy exactly what uh, I'm doing so you don't get lost. Last one, beautiful. Okay, next exercise, just lift those heels, just butt kicks in the back. We're on to exercise number four in section one. Good, just kicking back into here. Now, come and step up on the board. This is an exercise, have your feet on one and one. So Jen, uh, sorry, Pat, this is a little exercise for you, Pat, because I know we've got knee problems. We have a lot of people that are suffering from knee problems. What I want you to do is just rock side to side, nice and easy. Bend the knees enough that you don't have pressure. Your legs aren't straight pushing into the knees. And at the same time, you don't have um, such a bend in the knee that they're taking the pressure. And one of the points we talked about on Tuesday is don't let your knees go ahead of your toes. When you bend your legs, make sure it's your butt going back a little bit and not your knees going forward. Make sure the butt goes back like you're sitting on a chair and not pushing your knees forward. Okay, so here's the exercise for everybody. This is a knee strengthener and a leg strengthener. Push down on the right foot, lift the left foot, straighten it as tight as you can. Now bring it back, change. Push on the left, straighten the right leg as much as you can and squeeze the muscle. Come back, go back, squeeze, tight, down. Now if you notice, as I'm squeezing, I'm pulling my toe back as well if I can. And I'll explain why we do this exercise, because we're just gonna do this for a minute now. Just back and squeeze that leg muscle. So two things are happening. As we straighten the leg, the muscles around the knee are getting stronger. They're getting stronger around here because we're tightening the knee or the muscles all the way through the leg, down through the knee because we're straightening the leg. As we're doing that, we're also taking any pressure off of the knee of bone on bone because we're not pressing down onto it. And this is a great muscle strengthener that we use for dynamic tension. I know Kathy, a great class yesterday, Kathy, um, was talking about this as well. So just that little motion in here, going into here. Now, the other thing that we're doing, which is dynamic, is think about this. You're standing on your leg, not even thinking about it, but the surface is slightly off balance. So as we're doing this, we're putting slightly more pressure on the inside of the foot, the ball of the foot, the big toe, to make sure we stay balanced. So here we are, maybe that you have balance problems, last couple, you have balance problems and now you're on a surface that's off center, it's not even flat, and yet you're able to balance and focus on the other leg working. Last one, each side, right, squeeze that muscle, good, and come back and just rock it out. So that's the fourth exercise we did. If you need to stop and get water, please do. If you want to uh, <clears throat> go a little slower, please do. This is just helping you create what's best for you. You know your body better than anybody else. Okay, <clears throat> I got a uh, little, little uh, phlegm coming up. All right, last thing we're gonna do, this is the last one minute now. What I want you to do is just come and find your balance. Your feet are in two and two. So find that pressure point and find the stillness. We got one minute of doing this. Now, once you've found your balance, I want you to play the flute with your fingers. Because what we got here is the ability for your brain to figure out your balance and at the same time, use your dexterity of your fingers because the brain has to make the fingers work and at the same time, the brain's making your, your balance work or adjusting your balance as you begin to lose the center. And so we're multitasking the brain. This is fantastic for Parkinson's, for MS, for any ataxia, uh, anything where there's a, a traumatic brain injury or a disconnection going on between the brain and the body. Multitasking will help single tasks feel easier, but it's training the brain to perform greater than the challenge is trying to take you down. There you go, good. Now, the last thing we're gonna do as part of this now 
is go to the side and I want you to look to your right when you step on your right leg. Now push, look to your left. Push, look to your right. Push, look to your left. And feel as the board rocks, I want you to feel how your body, your leg that you're standing on is adjusting, but you're changing the way you look. Now, if you have vertigo, what I would like you to do here is just shift your eyes. So you're not moving your head. If you have vertigo and it's making you a little dizzy, really push your eyes to look to the left. When you step to the left, push your eyes to look to the right. And again, if you're okay, now we can go a little bit faster. So we're stepping and walking and changing our vision so we're not looking at the ground. We're able to feel what's going on with our body and our eyes are allowing us to be able to see everything. Good, come back to the middle. Find your balance one more time. Run those fingers. There you go. Keep that balance. 10 seconds, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and push down with the left foot, step off the board, that's section one done. It was the slowest section, it was a teaching section. Grab your water, let's get onto the second section in about one minute. So you've got a minute's rest, just to grab that, that, uh, um, what am I doing? Grab that water, get a little bit of a heart rate coming down. Hey Pat, how you doing? Good to see you. Um, great to see you here. And there's Pat saying hi to Bob as well. Bob, you remember when we were working out. Seems like forever ago now, uh, but I know it's still dynamic every day. Sandy, good to see you here. Bob, uh, Bob saying hi to everybody. That's Bob Eubanks, that's great. <laughs> Bob, okay, if you wanna play the tuba, Bob, instead of playing the flute, then we're gonna to have to change and you'll have to do your balance and be out here, right? So I'm gonna build new poles so you can bring them together. That's so good. So here we go, Craig. Um, uh, Craig, great ideas to work with. Like I said in there, Craig, it's really connecting the brain to the toes first. So the fact, even if you feel in your shoe, the toes just beginning to try and pull up, you're beginning the journey of connecting. Because all that happens is when the toes begin to work, that feeling and strength will continue to move down your foot into your ankle where you can get that control. Again, keep working on it. Don't worry about what you can't do. Celebrate what you can do. Those small little moments, even if your toes aren't moving, but you feel like they want to. That's the beginning of success. So great for you to continue to do this um, and not give up because the only way that you'll ever lose is when you give up. There's always gonna be progression better than decline when you're working through it. I'm proud of you. Laura, good to see you here. Okay, here we go. Second part now. As you'll see, Craig, I'm always thinking, how can I help you? How can I help people? Okay, put your feet on two and two. Just rocking side to side. This is the part of the second section, basically one minute each. Have your chair ready as well, because we're going to be jumping to the chair after this first exercise. Okay, find your balance. All I want you to do, push your butt back against the wall and stand up. We're not even bending the knees. Just push your butt back and begin to feel those pressure points in the feet. And again, don't worry about being balanced perfectly in the middle. Don't worry about the board being stationary. What, just work on as you begin to stand up. I tend to feel like I've got a little bit more weight on my left hip right now as I go back, because as I push to go stand up, I notice the board is tipping to the left. So now I just want to adjust my weight a little bit and I might overdo it as I push up. I want to try and put a little bit more push on my right side so I'm not leaning to my left, keeping my hips perfectly over my knees. There you go, good. Now as you do this, sit back just a little bit. So we bend the knees just a little bit and then push back up again. So it's like I'm halfway sitting down and then I push back up again. Halfway sitting down and then push back up again. And halfway sitting down and push back up again. We've got 20 seconds, half sit down and stand back up. And the whole time, 
you're working on adjusting the balance. Even if my board went all the way to the right, I don't mind because I'm going to bring it back to the middle again. And that is training your balance, your proprioceptive connection of your pressure points to be able to know exactly what you're doing pushing back up again. There you go. Good. Let's go two more. We've got three seconds left. Last one. There you go and stand back up again. Good. Step off of the board and I want you to grab your chair and put your chair behind the board. Now, if you don't have a chair, it's okay. You can hold on to the poles and imagine that you have a chair. All right, and I'll show you. All you'll do is you'll kind of do this and standing up as if you had a chair. Just want to see, I saw Bob Eubanks. Carol, great to see you here. Laura, hi again. Um, Dan, where's the strangest place you've ever made whoopee? Oh, Bob, don't even start me on that one. I'm sure there's so many people here today that I know you introduced really the national term whoopee, uh, Bob. And I know you've got great stories of that. Okay, next exercise. What I want you to do is just rock on the edge of the chair and push back. We're not even standing up. So we're here and begin to feel the flexibility in your hips which is what we're working on now. Your feet are on the ground and you're just working on the flexibility of the, the, the start motion to stand up. So we're here and back. Now, as you lean forward, squeeze your abs. That means blow out, breathe in. I'm gonna do a couple more. There you go, good, and here. Now, what I want you to do is put your hands on the poles. Now you're gonna rock and almost stand up. Feel yourself, you're pushing on the floor. As I rock, push on the ball of your feet and come and sit down again. Rock and then come and sit down. Now, by taking my hands forward onto the poles, I'm getting my momentum, my body weight, more forward over the ball of my foot and rest for a second. By going over the ball of the foot, you're using your thigh muscles to push up. Whereas when you're back, you end up using your lower back. You don't engage the leg muscles as much your core may be weak and you find yourself unable to get up like you're falling back. So now what we're gonna do, you have two options. If you don't have a chair, just kind of sit down and pull yourself back up. If you have the chair, lean forward and pull on the poles and pull yourself up. That's the kind of, the, the, I wanna say the basic movement. And if you want the more advanced one, put your hands on your knees, rock on, to the balls of your feet and use your hands to push up. Are you ready? Here we go. I'm going to start off with the basic movement, again, off the chair, grabbing the poles for the first three. The next three, I'm going to use my hands on my knees. Here we go. And rock. That's one. Hold onto the poles, push your butt back, sit down softly. And again, rock forward. That's two. Push your butt back, come and sit down. And go again. That's three. Push your butt back, come and sit down. Now, keep doing that if you want. If you don't have the chair, keep doing the squats. I'm going onto my hands on my knees. Are you ready? And go. That's one. We've got two more to go. My hands are still on my knees. My hands being on my knees will help support my body weight. This is two. And last one. And three. Good. We're going to progress this on now. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to use the poles to stand up. Follow along with me. We're going to get up on the board. I'll show you one time, then join in. We're going to do 10 of these today. I'm going to rock. I'm going to step up on one on one. I'm going to find my balance. I'll push down my left foot. I'll step back. I'm going to sit back on the chair. Here we go. 10. Are you ready? Do this with me. Come on. We got this. And go up one on one. Find your balance and step back. That's one. We've got nine to go. Sit down. This is one minute. Here we go. Up. Step. Find your balance. Step down. That's two. Here we go. Push it up. Three. Step up. I'm doing right foot first for the first five. Step back. That's three down. Come on. You've got this. Up. Step up. Find your balance. That's four. Come sit back down. Here we go again. Push up. Step one and one. That's five. Now I'm going to do the same thing. You've got five to go, but I'm going to step up with my left foot first so we train both sides of the body. Here we go. Up. Left foot, right foot. That's six. Here we go. 
and we go again. Up, left foot. I'm gonna step back this time with my right foot first. I think I've been doing that each time. I'm gonna step back with my left foot first, sorry. Here we go, three to go. Step up, left up, right. Find your balance, it's quick motion. Don't worry if you can't do it, I'm gonna step back with my left foot. If you can't find that balance, don't worry. Here we go again, up. This is number nine, find that balance. It's not being able to find the balance that makes the difference. In the long run, you'll be able to find it. Last one, up, step, and hold that balance. Very good. That's the second exercise of the second five done. Let's move the chair out of the way. Okay, next exercise coming up. Um, uh, Bob, great exercise. You still have trouble standing up. That's the thing, which is that you have the success if you don't keep working. I know Bob said this on TV interviews and talks about it all the time when he calls out to you as well. He says the most important thing is keep doing the exercise. If you take time off, you will feel a decline. But if you keep doing it, even a little bit each day, it helps continue to work. Okay, what I want you to do, step sideways. My right foot goes on the board. If you want to hold on with both handles, you can. <clears throat> if you want to go to one, two hands on the front, you can, or one hand if you feel confident. Now, what I want you to do is just push back and forward. Notice my upper body is not working, right? My upper body is still, my knees are bent very slightly, and I'm pushing on my toe, pushing on my heel, pushing on my toe, and finding my balance because I'm keeping my body centered the whole time. Now, what I want you to do, take your left foot, Take it back till it's about level with the pole and take the right foot and put it level with the pole. So we're kind of on two and two and just rock forward and backwards. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're in here. Now come and find your balance. Find that balance. I haven't practiced this one in quite a long time. Good and rock forward and backwards. Good, and one more time, find that balance. Oh, my balance. So this is one thing that I just discovered. Uh, push back on your left foot, bring your right foot back to your left foot. Now take your left foot forward the same distance and rock. This is one thing I just discovered for myself. I wanted to be balanced and I started off bad. Instead of forcing it, I told myself, relax. Feel the pressure, don't force it, because when you force something, something else gets integrated. Whereas when I relax, I allow my pressure points to be integrated at that point, and I found my balance. Here we go, find your balance. Just relax, if you're, not, if you're having a hard time, think of relaxing, think, where's the pressure on my feet? Do I need to put more pressure on my back foot, my right foot, or my front foot? And just do it slowly, change the pressure, good. And rock forward and backwards again. Excellent. And come and find that balance again. Good, and rock backwards and forwards. Now what I want you to do, push back on the right foot, bring your left foot to it. Now, we're gonna play a little game. I'm gonna tell you where to put your right foot or your left foot, and then you gotta find your balance as quick as you can. Are you ready? Good, take your right foot to number one, the other side of the middle, and find your balance. Good, push back, bring the feet together. Take your left foot to number three, and find your balance. And it's not about being perfect, it's about trying and, and figuring out how to work. Take your left foot to number two. Balance. Ooh, little challenge. And push back, take your right foot to number three, and balance. Bring your right foot back, take your right foot to number one, and balance. You'll feel most of your weight now will be on that right leg, because it's close to the middle. And step back, take your left foot to number one, and balance. And push back, left foot back, take your left foot to one again, find that balance. So this is a game you can play if you leave the 60 up balance board out and come back, take your right foot to number two. And you're walking by just for 30 seconds, step on the board, give yourself a little task. I'm just gonna just step on it, balance, and then I'm gonna continue on my way. Left foot to three. 
And that can be a really good way to get the brain to continue to feel pressure points at the spur of the moment. Just a quick little uh, second, 10 seconds on it, playing. Good. Bring your right foot to number one on this, on the right side of the board. Bring your left foot to number one. Now what I want you to do is take your left foot to number two. So you'll notice my right foot is closer to the middle of the board. Now you'll notice I've got to put more weight on my back leg, but I've still got to put pressure on the front. So again, we change. Push back, bring your left foot back to your right foot, take your right foot to number one. So now they're close to now find that balance point. And all we're doing, we're playing, so have fun with these little games as we go. Good, push back. Now what I want you to do is step sideways off the board. And that is the exercise number four. Here we go, last one. Step up on one on one. All I want you to do is just rock side to side. Just rock side to side. This is the last exercise of section two. And pushing. Now begin to lift your feet. We're going to go into a one minute walk, which will challenge you through here. Are you ready? <coughs> Bob, this is a great one for you just to lift those, those heels. Bob Schrader. And go. Here we go. Now, if you want to go a little faster, we're going to go into a one minute run. We want to get the heart rate up here. And you're just working as quick as you can. Feel how soft your feet are on the board. Even if I lift my feet higher, I'm still, you're here, listen. I'm not slamming the board. I'm nice and light on the board. There you go. We got uh, 31 seconds to go. <clears throat> can you go a little faster? Or if you can't go fast, can you just push on your toes a little bit? Or just walk it slow and balance and balance and balance. We're just doing this for a one minute cardio push. Get that heart rate up and start building stamina. You're doing great, come on. <clears throat> Last 10 seconds, anybody wanna race me? I'm not competitive at all. People that know me know that I don't mind if I win or lose. I'm just happy to participate. Yeah, I'd like to see Bob Eubanks' response to that one. But man, I can't stand losing. Good, just rocking side to side. Good, and what I want you to do, step off of the board, get your water. We're going on to band workout. So move the poles inside and put the short bands onto the, onto the board. We've got about a minute to do this, just over a minute. Get your water first. No rush, but move the, back, the poles inside and put the bands on the outside. Great job. Okay. Now, one thing I want to say, I was going to say, um, uh, Good morning, Kay. Thanks for being here. Just look at these while you're putting your bands on. I'll just talk out there. Um, <laughs> frog in my throat. I think it's a toad, Bob. I don't know who put their foot in my mouth, but I have a toad in there. Um, and Bob, it, it did really change. I witnessed it. I was there with you, seeing it and how it continues. Again, if you don't use it, and Bob will attest to this, if Bob's taking a little bit of time off, he'll notice he loses that um, confidence and fluidity of movement all the time. Uh, but you get back on it, as long as you've been training and don't take too long off, it comes back so quick. But don't get to the point of losing, keep doing the exercise. All right, here's my short bands going on real quick. There's that one there. We got some new exercises today with the bands as well. Now remember, as you're doing this, as you're doing this exercise, remember, if you don't have bands or don't want to use bands, just do the arm movement. Put your feet in here on two and two. So my feet are on two and two, I'm just rocking. We're gonna go through these, these are one minute, we've got five one minute exercises. This is gonna be uh, a little tough, but again, we're looking at endurance. Are you ready? Take the right hand, take the band. Now, we normally do a bicep curl, but we're gonna combine this today with a squat and a bicep. So we're gonna go squat, and as you stand, you're gonna bicep curl. Understand? We've got 30 seconds. Oops, hang on. 
I've got to put the timer on. There we go. Okay, we've got 30 seconds, right foot only. I mean, a right arm only. Grab the right. Are you ready? And here we go. Squat and curl. And squat and curl. And squat and curl. Keep that balance. Squat and curl. We've got 30 seconds on the right, 30 seconds on the left. And curl. And squat and curl. Only squat until you feel your knees touch the poles. That way, and you should be sitting back, we're not getting those knees going ahead of the toes. Last one, up, good, change arms. Here we go, same thing, and squat, and curl, and squat, and curl, and squat, and curl, and squat, and curl. You're doing fantastic, come on, stay in there with me. Squat, now make sure as you're working on the balance, you can see I'm constantly working on the balance because I'm, <clears throat> I still got a toad in my throat, Bob. As I'm working on the balance, you'll see I'm adjusting all the time, but I'm squeezing that bicep. Here we go, last one, and put it back down again. Good, just rock out side to side. It's funny, I can see people walking by my front door and I've got lights on in here. Um, so that I can brighten the place a little bit and everyone's stopping and looking through the glass front door. It's so funny, sometimes I feel like they're gonna walk up and look through there or even knock on the door. Imagine I'm teaching a class and someone comes in and starts knocking on my door. We had it one time, remember the delivery guy, USPS guy or UPS or FedEx guy and he wouldn't leave. But uh, it rarely happens, who knows. Okay, second one, what I want you to do now, bring your feet to one and one. Now this is an ab exercise. Hold on to the poles, and all I want you to do is bend your knees and squeeze forward until your chest touches the top of the poles and then stand up. We're not starting yet, so you can just try it. So I blow out on the way down, I squeeze my abs, and then I stand back up again. And again, I'm just trying to balance, but what I'm doing is I'm contracting these abs. I'm thinking by squeezing my abs, I can bring the top of my abs lower to my pelvis. So watch one more time, it's here around my back, if I show you from the side, it's here, I do this, and I'm squeezing my abs. Are you ready? We got one minute to go. Are you ready? Find balance and go. Squeeze, touch that chest on top of the poles, and again. That's two, squeeze those abs as tight as you can, blow out. Three, and again. Four, allow your back to round. Stand up strong. Five. Stand up strong. And six. Stand up strong. And seven. Stand up strong. Eight. Squeeze those abs as tight as you can. And again, suck the gut up. Don't let it, don't think of just dropping the gut down. Think about squeezing it in as you squeeze those muscles and don't let it hang. Here we go. We got 10 seconds left to go, ladies and gentlemen. Squeeze those abs, and again. And we got one more, come on, come on. There you go, and just rock side to side. Awesome, put your feet on two and two. Next exercise we have. This one is gonna be um, a little bit of a challenge, which is gonna be tough, I'm just reading what it is so in here. What we're gonna do here, is you're gonna stand, take your, the right hand, your feet are on two and two. And what we're gonna do here is I want you to push on the right and pull and then step on the left. So every time you push on the leg, we're gonna try and balance on one leg, not balance the board, stand on one leg. Again, strengthening the leg we're on as we lift the bag. Are you ready? We got 30 seconds, here you go. Push and lift and rock and lift. Lift that left foot off if you feel comfortable. I'm just doing a slight hamstring curl, so I'm just bringing my foot behind me in here. And lift as high as you can. My palm is facing my side. I'm actually running my hand up the side of my leg onto my side. So push, we're one leg and here. And one leg and here. And one leg, last one, here. Good, change hands. We take the left, now push with the right. Now step on your left, lift your right, lift it. Here we go. And one, 30 seconds, 
two, and three, and four, and five, and six. I can feel that sweat, it's already been dripping down my back. I can now feel that sweat running down the side of my face. You're doing great, come on. You're hanging in there, you're gonna be fantastic, come on. We're almost there, last three seconds. Lift and push, give me one more, give me one more, come on. Strong and down, great job. All I want you to do is just walk and just lift your legs behind you as we're rocking side to side. Again, remember, if you feel dizzy, if you need to get a drink of water, if you're getting tired and wanna sit down, you're your best coach, you feel your body. I want you to feel your body, and you've gotta be honest with yourself, don't be brave, don't try and overdo it, be smart. If you need to take a break, that's fantastic, because it means you're pushing yourself to the highest level of your comfort zone, but you're not taking risks outside of that, and then you can join back in at any time. We've got two exercises left to go. This next one is gonna be a tough one. So what you're gonna do is come and put your feet again on two and two. Now what we're gonna do is you're gonna take your hand and bring it up to here. Then you're gonna bring it across, out and down. So bring your shoulder forward to here, across. Now think about this in a gym. We usually use weights. You'll do shoulder lifts into here, but we're gonna bring it to this angle. Then you have machines that do chest. So this is a shoulder and chest fly. Shoulder strengthener on the anterior, the front of the shoulder, and then the chest. Are you ready? We've got 30 seconds each arm. Again, if you don't have bands or don't wanna use them, you can just do this and squeeze across. Here we go. 30 seconds, four, three, two, one, and we go up, across, out, down. Up, across, out, down. You'd also notice we're working a little bit on the rotator cuff. So from here to here is a rotator cuff movement. Great for loosening up the shoulders. And again, if it's too tight with the bands that you've got, put the band down and just do this exercise with your body. Last one, I should say with your body, with your arm. Good, let's change arms. So palm facing down, line my hook up, and come up to here, chest, back, and down. Up, out, oh, that's actually in, not out. So here, bring the elbow in, here, and down. Good, we're into our last 10 seconds. Here we go again. Up, shoulder, in, ooh, last one. Oh gosh, I can feel that one working. Good, and rock side to side. We are on to our last exercise, ladies and gentlemen, for today. Make it great. You've got Debbie's class tomorrow, which we know is fantastic leading into the weekend. And Debbie has a class on the weekend as well without the balance board. <clears throat> so we continue to build. Last exercise. All you're gonna do is bring your hand up. Now, if you notice, I've gone to this angle. Does that make sense? And all we're gonna do is from here, it's like my fist is pointing forward, we're just gonna rotate the shoulder just a little bit this way. But to make it tougher, because we never wanna make things easy, put your right foot on number two and your left foot on number three. Find that balance and we're gonna go from here. Now, if you don't want the challenge of the balance, keep your foot on two and two. But here we go, last 30 seconds. We're up, my palms forward, keep the elbow in and go. One. And notice my elbow is hardly even moving, right? My elbow is staying tucked in. I've got my feet on two and three, so I've got more pressure on my right leg, and I'm adjusting that balance. This is no different than as you step up a stairs, you're gonna have more pressure on one leg than the other as you step up, but we're really engaging the pressure points while we're working on a rotator cuff movement. Keep the elbow tight. Small movement, it's such a small movement. Good, and let's change, put this one down. Now take your left leg to number two, take your right leg to number three. I think I just saw Debbie Sievers join us. Debbie, great to see you in your class tomorrow. Debbie, Bob Eubanks is with me today. Bob's in the house, we're doing the workouts. So this is the last exercise we're finishing up. So bring your hand up, again, like you're punching through onto a wall. 
you'll notice that the handles rotate with you. So you can hold on, let it rotate now. Left leg on two, right leg on three, elbow stays tucked into your side. And all I want you to do is move that hand out so we're rotating the shoulder. Are you ready? 30 seconds, last one. And I'm getting the time, here we go. One, and two, and three, and four, and five, and six, and seven. Keep it going, come on. We've got the last 10 seconds of the workout. Keep fighting that balance. Balance first, but let the body move. Let the brain multitask movement. You're in there. Come on, we're almost done. Almost done. And put the ball, put the handle back down. Great job. What I want you to do, just come to one and one, and just a little bit lift your knees across. See how I'm bringing my knees across a little bit into here? Just to loosen up the pressure in the outer hip by just stretching it across our body. You're actually taking your knee through the middle between the poles. Whew. That was a great workout today, everyone. And it was great having Bob here. And I love the fact that Debbie's joined us as well to get in here because that's part of the 60 Up team. That is, we got such great energy. I love having everyone so involved. But the most important energy for all of us is you because you being part of this group gives us purpose. It gives us a reason to work hard to help you because that's our joy. And, and I don't say that lightly. Knowing and hearing your success story, seeing your fight. It's like sometimes when you're in the ring or you're watching a boxing match on TV and you see someone getting beaten, but they refuse to give up. Eventually, even if the fighter you like is winning, you start to have feelings for the person that refuses to give up, that's still fighting. And sometimes that underdog, they win our heart. And that's what I gotta say for all of you. You guys continually win our heart because you refuse to give up. It's so easy to give up. It's not a good result, but how much easier is it to sit on the sofa and waste the minutes, seconds, you know, hours, days, months, years, we waste them because we're not taking the power and fighting back. And that's what makes us fall in love with you guys and having such an amazing community because you may be the underdog fighting a tough battle, but the underdog so often can come back and win. Okay, step back off of the board. And I move the board forward a little bit. We're going to finish with a couple of stretches. Put your feet far apart, just a little bit wider than shoulder apart. Put the board to the side and just stretch a little bit. You'll feel the stretch on the inside of your left leg. Rock to the other side and feel that little stretch on the inside and across. And just a little bit wider. I'm going to take my feet a little bit wider so I feel a little bit more of a stretch. And I'm just pushing. Make sure as you're doing this that your knee goes over your toe. Don't let the knee go in as you're pushing. Keep the knee out over the toes, the same angle as the foot. Last two here, and then bring it back to here. Good. Come back into the middle. Shake those legs out a little bit. There you go, good. Put your right foot onto the ground, lift the heel up, and just roll the knee inside to out. There you go, good. Just rolling it around. And change legs. Left foot on the ground, lift the heel, now roll that knee around. Hey, my trash truck's here, and guess what? I put my trash out today. Remember when I was teaching a couple of weeks ago and I saw it going by and I forgot to put my trash out. Good, right foot on. Now take it from the outside and bring it in. So we reverse the roll. There you go. Look at that, the clock just went off. I'm running behind on time. Change leg, left foot, roll it across here. There you go, good. Now what I want you to do, I'm gonna turn off that alarm because I'm sure it's annoying you more than it's annoying me. What I want you to do now is step back slightly, arms almost straight, legs are straight, and just drop your shoulders. Keep your weight on the ball of your foot. As you go forward, don't let this happen as you go forward because you'll stretch the back of the knees. I don't want that, I want the hamstrings higher up. So as you go back, Think of going forward and down and keeping your weight on the ball of your foot. Here we go. You're down. Feel that stretch. Now, I know Debbie, uh, not Debbie, Kathy did this one yesterday. Roll the back up and come back up. Then go straight down. Such a good exercise. I know Kathy said it's her favorite to do. And roll up and come forward. 
and roll it up. And if I show you from the side, we're here. We roll it up and come up. We go down flat. And then you're going to push the lower back up and roll it back up again. There you go. And last one. Come down, lift the lower back and roll it back up again. Great job. Shake those legs out. What I want you to do now is take your arms, shake them out, roll the shoulders back. Feel solid, feel how solid the ground feels. Your pressure points are getting better all the time. You're feeling the ground and that gives you freedom from the ground up. Now roll them forward. There you go, rolling it up. Good, take your right arm, bring it across your left and just a little stretch into here. We stretch out the, the uh, by bending the arm, we stretch out the tricep. We're also stretching out the back uh, by the shoulder and a little bit down into the tr the uh, lats as well, the latissimus dorsi. There you go, good, and change sides. It's funny, when I use uh, medical terms like latissimus dorsi, and we look at those things, or sometimes some people say dorsi, but I say dorsi, it sounds so like unnecessary for me. I prefer to say, let's stretch the back, let's stretch the upper back, the inside back, the shoulders, those type of things. Good, next thing I want you to do is lift your arm up and just see if you can move your hand down your back and just hold it there for a second and bring it down take the other one put it on your head and try and move that hand down your back see if you can walk those fingers and bring it back last time each side and try and walk those fingers down your back feels like a little massage actually but I have to say it's not a good massage certainly nobody will be paying me to give them a massage like this There you go, and bring it down. Good, now what I want you to do, just drop your hand down the side so we stretch the side a little bit in here. You did some great work today. Very basic at the beginning, really educational. And then we got into the workout from the second one on where we started doing a lot of leg work, a lot of balance work, and then including the upper body. And again, stretch down your right hand side. Good, and go over, left hand side. There you go, good. Now, last exercise we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you a variation. If you wanna do it on your chair, just come and sit on your chair, bring the knee up, and just try and hug your shin. I'm gonna give you a different one if you're a little bit more advanced, but if you wanna just hug your shin, these are great exercises for strengthen, sorry, stretching out the front of the thigh, and at the same time, being able to loosen up the hip because we're pulling the hip up. The one I'm gonna do, you can do that one instead. The one I'm gonna do, left hand goes on the pole, push the ball to the side, put your right hand on your thigh, run it down to your knee. Once you feel there, put your weight on your left foot, lift the knee up, and see if you can pull that heel back. So we get a stretch on the front of the thigh. I'll show you one more time. You run your hand down to your knee, now lift your knee up past your hand. You can either pull it up here, which is the same as sitting on the chair, or if you can reach your ankle, pull from here, pull it back, and just see if you can pull into, this is the goal I'd love you to get to, you're trying, because we can really stretch that quad out. Good, let's go the other leg, just one time. Here we go, slide the hand to the knee, put your weight on your right leg, lift the knee past your hand, see if you can find your shin or your ankle, and then if you can pull that leg back, and feel the stretch down the front of the quad. There you go. If you want to move your hand down further and grab your foot, you'll get a little bit more of a stretch. Not easy, I know. Not easy at all. There you go, and put it back down. And that, ladies and gentlemen, get your water. That's the end of the workout. I'm gonna come and see how you're doing. See, I'm sweating. It's uh Um, going all the way back, let's see the last thing. Um, Bob said, uh, Bob, <laughs> this is Bob Eubanks. For those of you who just showed up or weren't on the class today or watching on YouTube later on, Bob Eubanks joined us today and it's great to have you here, Bob, because I know without you, I would never have created this and without the success that you had, we wouldn't be able to share it with everybody. So thanks so much. And again, this was... Uh, well, Bob, when you and I first started training to get your, your mobility and health back 
and reverse the decline of aging, which was incredible to see even to this day. Three years later, you're still so much better than you were three years ago, which is amazing. Um, and so many doctors wouldn't have believed it because they just assigned things to aging and not what we're doing. But we would never have thought from that first day of trying this board and people, ladies and gentlemen, I shouldn't say people, you're not people, you're everybody, but if you saw the board that I built for Bob to train on made out of wood, it was rickety, the poles moved everywhere, but it was so good because it gave so much confidence for Bob. And I remember Bob, the first time you went to get on the board, um, you were really nervous. It was like you weren't sure, but within a minute, once you understood how to get on and off the board, and we created the program that worked so well for you. Um, there was never a fear factor in there. In fact, I found old videos. Maybe I should post them. What do you think, everyone? I got uh, old videos of Bob on the board, the original board, walking over it without the poles even in it, going sideways, learning how to change his balance forward and backwards. But I'll send them to you, Bob, and you can decide because uh, whether I release those or not. They're great to look at, actually. I really enjoy finding them. Um, Deborah, uh, it was a good one. What's the best meal you've had all week? Uh, I don't know whether Debbie will talk about the meal, but probably uh, it was a great workout today. Debbie, thanks so much. Um, I'm looking very patriotic. Um, absolutely. This is what's great for me. The American flag is red, white, and blue, but also the Union Jack is red, white, and blue. So that's why America and England have always been such great allies. And I hope that continues on for always because uh, growing up in England, we always had so much respect and admiration for America. Um, and always felt that that brotherhood, that friendship, sisterhood, um, everything was there. It was really just home from home. So I hope we continue that as well. Jen, Jen, did you just come on camera? Um, I want you to know the very first exercise that I did today, go back and watch this one. The very first exercise that I did today um, was for you on the uh, spasticity that you had talked about and um, risk specifically. So go back and watch that one. It was addressed to you. So if, when I um, upload this one, when I save this one and then it goes to YouTube, take a look at that one because it was just for you. Um, hey, Bob, Debbie says hi to Bob. Um, all kidding aside, Bob, you really enjoyed the workout. You'll be back on Tuesday morning. Great, it'd be great. So if you have any questions for Bob um, or any thoughts or comments, be ready to post them here on Tuesday so Bob can jump in and uh, can jump in and uh, maybe write back comments to you on Tuesday. Jen, you couldn't find me. Um, I'm sorry to hear that. I know sometimes when my mother comes on here, I know on Tuesday she wasn't able to get on and watch this and I, she called me afterwards and said she doesn't know what's going on. So we're gonna continue to look into that. Um, so thanks so much for uh, letting me know. We gotta keep figuring out how we can do that. Pat, thank you so much as well. Thanks for being here. Craig, you're my inspiration, so thank you so much for being here. And I, again, I don't joke about stuff like that. Every single one of you inspires me to keep going because in reality, there's days that we, everyone has down days and you have to try and turn that around. It is a lot of work. When I say a lot of work, trying to reach as many people as we can. I've got meetings. I drive to San Diego tomorrow to go and meet with doctors and do demonstrations. And then I've got to go back on Monday uh, to meet with another group. So we're always off seeing how many people we can help. And the doctors are reaching out to us, which is incredible. Um, uh, Jen, you, I, I love what you wrote here, Jen. You said, but I did an iTube workout. Instead of a YouTube, an iTube. I love that because it is about you. So I didn't do a YouTube, I did an iTube workout. They should change. Hey, why don't we create a new platform called iTube where it's all about you and getting better? That's great. Uh, Deborah, you like the, the rotator cuff. Thank you so much for that as well. Um, again, we're always creating between Kathy, Debbie, and myself, we're always coming up with new things. And, and you'll see every class you go to, there'll be a new tip, something new. We're always trying to find better ways or more advanced or more simple ways to be able to touch everybody and, and help them get the success. Betsy, thanks, Professor. I uh, hope I don't get sent to the principal's office. I spent too much time there as a kid. So uh, I say that with a big smile. There wasn't always a big smile walking out of there, but there certainly were a few sore cheeks. And I'm not saying anything, but I will say that he had no walking issues, but he had a cane. So that lets you know a little bit there. Amy, thanks so much for being here as well. Um, I don't know if I saw you at the beginning, uh, whether you got the whole workout, but come back and do this one, it's great. Kirk, thanks so much. Uh, it, it's great. Uh, Kirk, you've been with me pretty much since day one, all the way from Arizona. And I hope you guys are doing well down there. I know Arizona is a huge focus on the press right now, on the media. 
um, but wishing everyone down there the very best always. So thanks, Kirk. Have a great weekend. But don't forget Debbie's class tomorrow. And I'm not pointing my finger at you, but I just pointed my finger at you. Uh, Bob, you're back playing golf again. That's great. It's uh, awesome. I, I did. Uh, I, the first time I played golf, it was amazing. My very first hit ever. I had my first hit and the ball went right on the green. My first hit, it was a par four. I got that ball on the green on my first strike ever. Sadly, it was the 18th green. I was on hole number one. I sliced it and it went on to the 18th hole, but it still counts. I hit off the tee and my first shot went on the green. Um, so that's great. Um, uh, Debbie, you said, yes, please post. Um, oh, the pictures of Bob. Well, I'll get that. Um, <laughs> I'll get Bob to approve that because, again, this was in my house and Maybe I should approve it, not Bob, because my house was not, and it isn't always the cleanest house out there. So um, I got to check and make sure that, nah, it's real life. I'm always going to be me. Uh, the frog in the throat was the best meal. Uh, thanks. Um, I appreciate it, Bob. You obviously know my cooking as well, not just my house, but my cooking. Not a good cook. Um, Scott, once this connects more and you touch more people, um, you are going to be a force of healing that's so unique and important. That's so kind of you to, to say, Scott. I really appreciate you saying that because I know, you know, Scott is a massage therapist. He's known for having healing hands and making people um, feel so much better. He's been doing that for years and I hear so many good things. So if anybody's in New York and needs an incredible um, healing massage, Scott is a fantastic person to reach out to. Um, so thanks so much. Uh, Amy, you got here late. Um, that's okay. As long as we don't have Betsy, the professor, figuring out that you got here late and then gives you detention or extra work, I think you'll be okay. So um, thanks so much, everyone, for being here. That's the end of the day today. Don't forget, Debbie's class tomorrow, 9.30 on the private group. That's 9.30 Pacific Standard Time, 10.30 Central Time. Don't forget, um, that is Bob, don't even go there. Um, it... Uh, <laughs> so don't forget Debbie's class, 9.30 Pacific Standard Time on this platform in the private group with over a thousand members already. Um, and we haven't had this private group for that long. Uh, so thank you all so much for being part of it. But Bob, you did, I didn't answer the whoopee question. Okay, I would tell you the very first place I ever had whoopee was in Latin class. I had an incredible teacher. Actually, she, I don't know whether she was good or not, but I had to learn Latin. Uh, Miss Bell was there. She was a very, uh, when you're a school kid, she was the most attractive female teacher. And I had written on my school book, which didn't go down well, but I've written Latin is, is, I, Latin is a language as dead as dead can be. It killed the ancient Romans and now it's killing me. So I wrote that on the front of my uh, class book. She got it. I ended up again going back to the principal. It was Betsy probably. Um, and walking out with sore cheeks. However, um, I was a bit of a jokester in class always and I had a whoopee cushion. So I decided to have that one day and I placed it underneath somebody's uh, seat when they were coming back to sit down. And obviously the whoopee cushion with the fart sound went off and that was my first uh, experience with whoopee. There you go, Bob. And again, I was back in the principal's office walking out with sore cheeks. So that's my story. Uh, Larry, <laughs> yeah, exactly, with the golf. You have to come out and play golf with Bob Eubanks sometime. But uh, first shot on the green, it's all down here. I will tell you in 2006, I did get the very first legitimate hole in one on Westlake Golf Course for the year 2006. I was out with a gentleman by the name of Ian Foy, a professional goalkeeper, was the head goalkeeper coach for the LA Galaxy. And I shot a movie with Universal Studios called Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell and Robert Duvall that actually is the highest grossing uh, soccer movie of all time. And Ian was my assistant on that, that uh, shoot. It was a great shoot. And we went out, we decided on New Year's Eve, we're gonna be the first ones out on the golf course. And what's even better, is the marshal witnessed the par three hole. I thought it had gone past the hole. Ian was like, he thought it went past the hole and the marshal jumped out the cart with his arms going on and it was in the newspaper saying that I got the first hole in one in California in 2006. I still have the golf ball. Um, so it's all downhill certainly from there, but uh, golf's a great game. Anyway, thanks so much everyone. I've kept you around too long. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Debbie's class tomorrow. Bob will be back on here on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> Bob goes, if that's what you call whoopee, it's no wonder you don't have children. They don't come from a cushion? Thanks for educating me, Bob.
It's lucky I haven't even turned 25 yet because that still gives me time to get it right. So um, thanks, everyone. Bob Eubanks, it was great to have you here today, the, your first class with this group. And hopefully you can come back and, and join us again on Tuesday um, and share some experience with people. If people. I said people twice now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have questions for Bob or comments for Bob's or funny stories, please feel free to add them in here as well. That's how we don't just have a community. We have a family. Have a beautiful rest of the day. I will see you on Tuesday. Debbie, have a great class tomorrow. Love to Kathy as well. Both of you ladies are incredible for helping everyone. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.